During the past five years, militant Muslims in Indonesia have waged jihad against Christians, killing as many as 10,000 people, burning churches and businesses, and leaving thousands of believers homeless. Emergency medical workers arriving on the scene at the Dulos Bible Academy in Jakarta, December 15, 1999, were preparing to take the body of 20-year-old Dominguez Kinjam to the Muslim morgue. They found him lying in a pool of blood, motionless on the ground, his head nearly severed from his body. Dominguez prayed that God would give him the strength to speak. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, he whispered four words, I'm a Christian. Miraculously, Dominguez survived the assault on the school that night. Two other students were also seriously injured. Another was killed. Dominguez says the incident has helped him grow closer to God. He says he prays for his Muslim attackers and he forgives them unconditionally as commanded by Jesus. I forgive them by praying and if I meet them one day, I will tell them about this. And Jesus said that we must forgive uh, our enemies. Pastor Li Deshen leads several unregistered house churches in China's Guangdong province. He says public security bureau officers have arrested him so many times in recent years that he's lost count. On one occasion, Li's hands and feet were tied together to a bedpost, and his jailers left him in that position for three days. Chinese authorities confiscated Li's church building and welded the door shut. But 40 new house churches were spawned as a result of the closing of the church building. In recent years, the Chinese government has arrested hundreds of members and leaders from the unregistered evangelical church movement. While Chinese central and provincial government officials claim the Christians are involved in illegal evil cults, Pastor Lee says many local authorities resist taking action against the believers because they've seen drug addicts and criminals transformed once they accepted Christ. Pastor Lee asked believers around the world to pray for their suffering Christian family members in China because more believers are likely to be arrested and imprisoned in the future. And they will come uh, any time. But we are not afraid as we have prepared ourselves. Please pray for us as we depend on God, not men. James was only nine years old when he witnessed the slaying of his parents and siblings at the hands of radical Muslim raiders. When the government of Sudan soldiers demanded that James convert to Islam, he refused, saying, but I'm a Christian. The angry soldiers threw James on a fire. He was badly burned and left for dead. VOM missionaries recently visited James in a displaced persons camp where he lives with his grandmother. James is a sad young man who still deeply mourns the deaths of his family members three years after they were killed. I could cry still thinking about them, but they are not more. James smiled with the joy of Jesus when VOM friend Tom Zorowski presented him with his first Bible, a gift from a little girl from New York. This is her own personal Bible. And she said, please give it to someone special in South Sudan. And so I thought you would be a good person to give it to. Do you like that? Yeah. Good, huh? Praise God. Rika is a typical teenager. She is outgoing, popular with her friends, and attends a local Christian high school. However, Rika lives in Indonesia, where being a Christian can test the depths of one's faith. 
A small group of students at Rika's high school arranged a Bible camp. It was the first ever event of its kind for her community, and the teens were very excited. The first evening went by without incident, unlike the second. In the evening meeting, we were rejoicing and singing songs. We were being very loud when the leaders asked us to quiet down. They told us about a pastor who had been burned alive in his church by the Muslim extremists. He asked us to think about this and asked, if such a thing happened to you, what would you do? We immediately quieted down and began thinking about what the leaders had told us. All of a sudden, a large stone came through the window. We heard shouting and more stones were being thrown. Everyone became frightened. The lights had gone out and there was broken glass everywhere. I was hit in the head with one of the rocks. I hardly knew what had happened to me, but I could hear screaming and crying all around. I cried out, we must pray. Don't panic. Pray. Ask God to help us. A number of radical Muslims had attacked the Bible camp. Some of the teenagers were being beaten with sticks as the men ran through the camp. Rika's arms were forced behind her back by one of the Muslims while another challenged her faith. The man shouted, are you a Christian? I told him that we were all Christians. The man was tall and had long hair. He picked up a piece of broken glass from the floor and held it against my stomach. Repeat after me, he shouted. Then he told me to deny Christ. I cried out in my heart to the Lord, save me, help me not to deny my faith. When I did not answer the man, he pressed the glass closer against me. Do you believe your God can help you now, he asked. Yes, I answered. I belong to God, and I believe he will save me. He grabbed a stick and beat me across my back and shoulders. The man yelled, You think that I am not strong. You think that I am not stronger than you, he yelled as he was beating me. I continued crying out to God in my heart and refused to deny him. Rika was repeatedly beaten by the attacker as he insisted that she deny her faith, but she would not. When he realized that I was not going to deny Christ, he said, You are strong too. You are stronger than I am. And he threw the stick on the floor. Rika and her friends were fortunate that night. Although some of the students had to be taken to the hospital, no one was seriously injured in the attack. <laughs>